Christian, yesterday, Hot Chile, Costa Fuego Project. Did I say that correct? You did. Yeah. You did. Excellent. So I've been uh, very interested in you guys, actually. I had Rick on the show uh, about three months ago, and we talked about you. And so it's, an, it's great to finally meet you. And we're at the 2025 Rule Symposium in Boca, so just so all of our viewers and listeners know. Um, give me a 30,000 foot view of Hot Chile, the Costa Fuego project. Okay. Uh, yeah, give me, what, what do I need to know? What are investors that need to know that are not familiar with the project at all? And then we're going to dive deeper. Okay, great. We'll, we'll start really high level. Yeah. We've, uh, we've been investing on the Chilean coastline for, uh, for the better part of 15 years since we listed the company and developing this, this large production hub, um, large resource play, uh, copper gold on the coastline, next to infrastructure, next to port on the Pan American Highway. So that, uh, that large project has seen around 230 million Australian invested so far. A very long journey, the deliver of pre-feasibilities this year uh, on that project. And also during this journey, developing really critical water assets for the area in which we operate, not just for our project, but potentially for an entire region. Um, so we're really at the pointy end of the, of the development uh, sort of cycle for a project of this scale. These things normally take about 20 years to develop from inception through to production. We're very much on track with that overall time frame. So it's now starting to get really interesting. We're in a, we're now, we started in the last copper cycle, and, uh, and now we're, it looks like we're sitting in a very interesting time in copper with one of only five assets that are held by independence at this scale. A big 100,000 tonne per annum copper project coming in, in the near term in 2030. We're looking to position it into production. So yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's certainly a, a project and a company for this moment in time for the market. So that's fantastic news. And I'm going back from my memory uh, let's work out the water situation a little bit because I remember talking about Rick and it's like, okay, love the project, but they need to solve the water problem. The, I'm paraphrasing, but those were his words. I think I think he was probably uh, he was probably more interested in what are the numbers around this this unique water asset that Hot Chili has developed. Tell us, right? Okay. So, I guess the situation occurred because we're we're in the driest place on earth in the Atacama Desert, right. where in my time since arriving in Chile and starting, starting Hot Chile's journey, regulations have changed. You're not allowed to take water out of the ground for, to build mining projects and operate mining projects anymore. And, uh, and that has really produced one of the hottest investment jurisdictions for the global water sector, building big desalination water plants in Chile to unlock new production is really, really probably one of the most attractive things to go to Chile now outside of trying to build a copper project. So uh, when we made our initial discovery back in 2010, we realised the ore bodies could be processed with, with ocean water with a better recovery. And we probably, rather than being called, um, you know, that hot Chile were, were sort of visionary, I think we didn't, we weren't visionary, we just did the first thing that an Australian would normally do was well, let's just apply for the license. We didn't know how long it would take, what was involved, and some 12 years later, we sit now with the only license to bring salt water out of the ocean in the entire region in which we operate. Yeah. And so I guess that's been a key differentiator on the stock over the last couple of years. Yeah. We've now put numbers, and the market has realized that the water business that we're potentially having in, in our hands is nearly as valuable as the copper project that we've been investing in for 15 years. <laughs> so a bit of a twist in the story recently with yeah. water, uh, and that's something that might be able to facilitate many major developments that don't have water around us, such as BHP, Lundins, Jose and Philo projects up in the high Andes and, and several other projects around us. So we're talking to all the potential customers, we're talking to all the potential um, big partners that would uh, finance and and uh, and look to, to buy into a project like that off of Hot Chili, 
Um, so it's an exciting time from that perspective. But you know, certainly the water is a bit of a differentiator. Prior to that, the, the, really the key differentiator has always been um, location, location, location for the project. Down on the coast, next to port at 700 metres altitude, on the Pan American Highway is very different to developing a project right. at 4,000, 4,500 metres with low oxygen levels. Right. You know, there's a saying, I'm sure you're familiar with it, it's, it reminds me, it's better to, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And it, yeah. <laughs> it makes me think of that, which you're very good. Do not get me wrong, but wow, that, it's an interesting turn how things work out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the project here. What do you got uh, in the ground? And I'm actually very surprised that you can come into production knocking on wood with both hands yeah, sure. within the next five years. Um, what do you got and why should people be interested? And in, yeah, copper being an all-time high. Yeah, you look, know. I guess we sort of start with the resource. It's, it's a top 10 undeveloped resource globally, yeah. um, as rated by S&P. Um, we think it's going to get bigger. It's a billion tons at the moment, 85% in indicated. The grade is very typical of the grade of oncoming supply at 0.45 copper equivalent. <coughs> and I think that billion ton resource base that, that stands behind three and a half million tons of contained copper metal, three million ounces of gold, I think that gets larger and it gets larger quickly. This year we've had our third major discovery over the 15 years since listing in La Verde, 30 kilometres to the south. Congratulations. A new, a new big porphyry sort of emerging and emerging rapidly, giving us access to one of the other things that, that Rick wants to see which, with the stock, which is access to more higher grade material, front end. So we've had some great intersections, you know, wide 1% copper equivalent intersections coming out of that discovery. So we'll see where that takes us this year and next. Um, but something that giving us a real bit of a bit of wind behind our back outside of the actual current copper price environment yeah. and the the short squeeze going on in the concentrate market which means projects that are five years out because we started our development permitting 12 years ago have a bit of an advantage in a time in a, in a sort of time perspective um, any projects like that that are going to be delivering new bulk tonnage concentrate to the market have got a lot of eyes on them at the moment in this in this copper market environment. So about that, the Chile, correct me if I'm wrong, the government just came out with, uh, they want to cut permitting time down by 50 to 70%. Does that affect you and your permits is because, or not because you've already applied for a permit? Look, anything, that, anything that helps with the final permitting process that we're engaged in um, yeah. is music to our ears. Yeah. I think uh, two months ago, <coughs> Two months ago, the company um, actually received uh, probably more encouragement where both our copper asset and our water asset were designated with priority status or project of national significance by the Chilean Ministry of Economy. So this is an initiative that the Chilean government are trying to bring forward or to cut red tape on permitting timelines for projects that they consider are important um, for the economy and secondly are also sustainable and, and have a high environmental index. Um, so it was good to see both of our projects getting that, so that's going to help us. And then the news last week, you know, is certainly a step in the right direction. I hear things like cutting timelines by 70%. Um, I've, I've been working in Chile for 17 years um, since, since, uh, since we started Hot Chile. Um, I wouldn't take too much out of putting numbers around these things at this point in time. All we can see is that both sides of Parliament are behind it um, and we believe that it will be positive. So no doubt it will be very helpful for our final EIA application which goes in next year. Okay, and then we'll just wait and see. We'll see if things yeah. are, are, are sped up. But, but no, it's a step in the right direction. Step in the right direction. But uh, that being said, you're already, and again, it takes decades at times to permit a chili mine. You're already, Five years sounds a lot to some people. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> a lot of the, not in copper. Not a lot in of copper. the marathon's been run, so yeah. it's yeah. it's good that it, a lot of that that hard work and grit by the company has been done, and to be sitting where we are within the current within the current resource cycle, um, yeah, is very very encouraging for the project economics. Excellent. So let's talk a little bit about share structure. 
market cap and then talk to us about um, any catalysts that you have coming up that you really can think will move the company. Yeah. But talk about share structure first. Uh, what's your market's market cap? How many shares do you have outstanding, fully diluted, and where are your options and warrants written at? What strike? Yeah, look, not not a lot of options or warrants. Um, it's a pretty clean capital structure, 151 million on issue. That's music to my ears. Yeah, and so so it's 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 very tight. Um, the register's very tight, uh, and we have a market capitalization of around 100 100 million Australian. Let's call it 65 million US. Yeah, and you've got an asset base that now at pre-feasibility level has 1.2 billion US post-tax NPV on the copper project and on the stage one and stage two water asset, another 1 billion US. So you've got this classic junior equation of a small market cap and very asset rich. Right. And so what, what is, a, what is a, probably the biggest opportunity for the company is how we're tackling our strategic partnership discussions and how we bring that asset value um, to the forefront for our shareholders um, when there is such a large disconnect between those two. So, yeah. so at the moment, you know, I think that that probably offers a, a near-term catalyst for, for our shareholders and, and something which um, you'll see often companies, if they're able to put themselves in that position, um, see a lot of interest in big strategics wanting to invest at the asset level rather than in new shares issued by right. a company. Right. Um, let's talk, go back to share structure. How much is owned by insiders and what kind of skin do you have in the game? Sure, insiders, um, the founding group of Hot Chili, which, I, which I'm part of. Um, so, so all of the, the original founders plus management and insiders would probably be around 9% in the company with, with, a, with about close, close to 8% of that being the original founders of which I was part of the the original group. Okay. So, you know, certainly um, uh, good skin in the game. Uh, could always be uh, could always be more, um, but uh, but no, we've certainly uh, I guess been one of the, the the key shareholders that has supported the company. Our group has probably deployed um, near on 25, 26 million dollars into the company over the time, uh, and it's something that uh, that is very much a flagship of the group of people that started this company. Yeah, excellent. Well, if people want to know more about uh, Hot Chili, uh, want to reach out to you, want to buy your stock, tell us how do they get it, uh, how do they find Hot Chili, how do they uh, reach out to you if you have a contact form on your site, and uh, how do they buy you? What do yeah, you trade on? We're, we're trading on the ISX, it's where a lot of the liquidity is, but we also offer trading in the North American market through the TSXV secondary listing and also through an OTC. QX listing in the US to, uh, to make it even more convenient for our growing North American shareholder base. But, you know, we sit at a, at, a, at, a, at a real inflection point for the copper sector where we have copper equities that have divorced from the rising copper metal price. Yeah. We saw that six months ago in gold yeah. and largely that started to correct uh, quite well in gold. And that's probably where we're sitting. Um, we see a correction about to occur in what few copper equities are left um, outside of the majors, and uh, and we see we see a white hot um, investment market uh, for assets in this space. So a very rare um, opportunity, I would say, to get large exposure to copper into a rising copper metal market. So um, well timed, yeah. And 15 years of effort, a lot of money into the ground, and uh, and I think that will offer shareholders a, a very attractive entry point right now um, on this long journey that we've been on. Excellent. Christian, I want to thank you so much for your time and uh, yeah, I look forward to following your story. Great. Thank you. Thank you.